All TTC riders will soon have access to wireless and cell service in at least parts of the subway. Now, the federal government is stepping in to mandate Rogers Communications open up the network to all carriers. That's expected to happen on October 3rd. Now, Bell, Rogers and TELUS then have 100 days to come to commercial agreements. And a statement from Bell today reads, in part, this is a good day for Toronto as all TTC riders should have high quality cell phone service on the subway, regardless of carrier, for greater connectivity, convenience and safety. With the federal government now forcing Rogers to finally work with other carriers, we look forward to providing our customers with underground wireless coverage in the coming weeks. A statement from TELUS reads in part, TELUS is pleased by today's decision to compel Rogers to provide access to all carriers on the TTC. Minister Champagne's order will significantly improve public safety and fair competition. It is regrettable that it took his action to force Rogers to do what they had promised to do months ago. And Rogers has also released a statement which reads in part, this approach reflects what we've been proposing all along to bring 5G services to all riders as quickly as possible. Bell and Telus have been dragging their heels and the federal government is now forcing them to work with us in earnest to make connectivity possible for all riders. And of course, important to mention, CP24 is a division of Bell Media. And Innovation, Science and Industry Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne announced the new mandate and he joins us live now with more on this. Minister, good to have you here. Thanks well, for it's taking a great the time. day. Thank you for taking the time. You know, it's, I think it's a big day for Torontonians. You were yeah. saying it. On, on a weekday, on average, two million people were affected. And my message was simple today to the telcos was enough is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Torontonians have been patient. They've been, you know, waiting for years to get connectivity. And what we announced is by October 3rd, uh, regardless of the carrier you have, you'll have cell phone coverage in the areas where we have an existing network. Now, we also said we're going to force them within six months to cover all the stations. Within two years, they'll have to cover 80% of the tunnels and within three years, 100%. And any new lines that will be open, any new stations will have to have full coverage in terms of data in terms of voice and text messaging. So this is big. It's big. And, you know, the timeline is clear laid out by you. But I do want to talk about the mandate that your yeah. government put forward today because it requires Rogers to immediately facilitate access to infrastructure and start sharing technical information. So how is that going to work? Because some company might argue that there's privacy regulations there. Well, we say, listen, we're the regulator. And my job is to fight for Torontonians, for the subway riders. And we said, listen, it's for you, Telcos, to figure it out. You had months to do that. Uh, even years in some cases, now we're saying we're fed up. So you fix it, we gave you, and, and you know, what I did is unprecedented in Canada's history. I think it's the first time that the minister would add conditions to a license to operate. This is, this is vital for the telcos to operate within the Toronto area. So we said, you fix it, you've had discussions, you failed to agree, now we took the unprecedented step to force you to do it, and not only will be watching, but I'd say millions of people will be watching you, customers of yours. So however you want to upgrade the equipment, if you want to do it to roaming or other type of, of arrangements you can put in place, that's your choice. But what I care about is that the sooner the better in terms of having everyone having some level of services within the subway system in Toronto. Believe it or not, it's the only transit system in Canada in our largest city for which you cannot have your, your cell phone or most people don't mm -hmm. have cell phone coverage. So we needed to fix that and that's why we took action decisively and I was there with the mayor this morning. Uh, will this mean that Rogers is going to have to roll back the 5G service that it implemented just a short time ago? Well, they have to see that in terms of what we said, you know, in terms of public policy, we said instead of having a few people with top service, we want to make sure that everyone has some level of services and then they can upgrade the equipment quickly. But, you know, uh, this is all about safety. You know, I was thinking if, if for people watching, you know, people want to be able to text their kids, for example, uh, their loved ones, their friends, uh, improving safety in, in the subway system, I think, is, is, is paramount. You know, people will feel safer because now they'll be connected and down the road they'll have full access in all station over time to make sure that they can use their cell phone. So we will be, I'd say, you know, we, it feels like we've been in airplanes mode in the subway system for years now. Uh, it's about time that we have decent services, top-notch services coming down to uh, TTC users here in Toronto. What do you know about how this is going to work in terms of money? Like, who will be paying for what here? Well, the carriers will have to upgrade the system, you know, because um, what's interesting in terms of before the BIA ad, you know, was responsible for the network, 
the moment that Rogers took over that company, that's at the time where I could act, because before that, they were not subject to the jurisdiction of the federal government in terms of, of spectrum. Uh, when they did that, that's why in April I said to them, hey, now that we have jurisdiction, you need to fix that. They failed. Then we said, you know, we're going to consult and then we're going to impose conditions. So what we did today is unprecedented, but I think the situation warrants it. I think of parents listening to us today, uh, even workers. Imagine, you know, in, in, you know in, in just a few weeks, you'll be able to watch your text message while you're riding in the subway system and over time covering the entirety of the subway system. I think this is something, you know, when people are asking government to, to, to fix issues that are affecting people in their daily lives, uh, I cannot think of something more pressing than, than cell phone services to ensure security and safety of the passenger in the subway system. And in this kind of unprecedented mandate, as you say, there's there's a clear timeline that's laid out that you, you went over at the beginning of this. But let's talk about that October 3rd deadline, because yeah. the carriers have to have this service in place by October 3rd, so that's about three weeks. Uh, and there's penalties if that is not carried through. Can you be a little more specific about what these companies might be facing? Well, listen, the first penalty would be, I don't think they want to face millions of Torontonians would be unhappy. You know, they're, they're customers. Uh, secondly, uh, I would say I have the authority to impose, for example, enforcement actions, so penalties and other measures up to the suspension of their license. I don't think we'll ever get there because they know me by now. They know that when we say something, they better do it. Otherwise, there'll be consequences. But I think it, it's really, it's just common sense. I mean, you know, people, millions of people are saying, hey, we want services. Now there's a clear timeline. It's part of their license. They have no choice. We are the regulator after all. So we, we have forced them to do so. They failed before. Now they are forced to. And obviously we expect them to comply. And I think millions of Torontonians will be watching also for the October 3rd. And, and I have all confidence that they will meet that deadline. And, but if they don't, though, I mean, of course, Trump well, will be happy. What, what kind of penalties? Well, there's monetary penalties. And at the very end, imagine I could suspend their license to operate. This would be kind of a nuclear option if you want. So, no, so they know that they can mess around with that because this is their license to operate. They have no alternative to, to, than, than to, to fulfill the conditions. And, but I think what, what matters most is the people, mm -hmm. is that they're, they have to serve the people who take the subway system. It, it's not about me or the federal government or penalties. It's about millions of people who are saying, hey, enough is enough. We've given you time. Now fix it. And now we impose a deadline. We impose also a time frame to expand the service because, as you know, it, it's only available in limited areas currently in the subway system. They'll have six months to cover all the stations, a bit more time to cover the tunnels because we can only do the work. They can only do the work during the night. Uh, but at the end, it's incumbent upon them. You know, I'm the regulator. They're the one who provide the service to Canadians. Canadians are watching. They're saying, hey, listen, now you have a deadline. Better follow it. And just lastly, before I let you go, you, you mentioned this is unprecedented, this move that the federal government has made. Why now? Well, because that's the moment where I had jurisdiction over them, because before, like I said, the, the incumbent was not subject to the, the Telecom Act in Canada. So when Rogers bought the incumbent, now I had jurisdiction to the spectrum. That's where, you know, with my colleagues, the Toronto caucus, you know, this is an issue that we've been talking for months, if not years. But the moment I got jurisdiction in April, when Rogers bought the incumbent, I said, you better do it. Then I gave them a deadline to do it. They failed to do it. Then I started consultation, consultation over. Then I imposed them. I forced them, basically, now all of them to do it. And I think the winners today is the millions of people watching. We're going to say by October 3rd, at least we'll have uh, cell phone service in, in the subway of Toronto. After all, I think we're in 2023. I think everyone would agree that this is the right thing to do feeling safer, but also more connected when you take the subway in Toronto. Absolutely. Okay, Minister, I appreciate you taking, on, taking the time today. Thanks for coming on. Good it's to see you. It's a real pleasure. Thank you.